What's up, Hobby Maniacs? MBG here today with a look at the new White Dwarf, and here they are. Here come, here come the Knights. Now, this is, uh, this is crazy stuff, kind of uh, out of left field, but I guess everything in the past couple weeks, and coming up in the next week is going to be out of left field. So we've got issue 66, and I guess these things are going into general subscription, too. So if you want to get a subscription for these, I guess check out the Games Workshop site, and you can have these delivered to your door every week. But until then... Uh, you know, we'll continue to do these. Maybe, maybe I need a subscription so they just uh, show up at my door every week. That would be pretty swell. Less, less work for me there. So the whole issue is pretty much about showcasing the new nights. Uh, there's some new paint supplies coming out. A uh, really sweet paint poster that I actually had the pleasure of seeing about uh, six months ago at one of the bunker stores that was out, it was out on trial and um, I noticed it and I was like hey that's really cool they should make that and put that in a white dwarf and uh, I just got a funny look from the guy behind the counter so uh, but hey we all got ideas right uh, <laughs> so uh, so there's that so wow the really big knights uh, these are awesome you get an extra sprue in the kit because uh, you know a lot of the parts to make the weapons actually were part of the torso itself so they couldn't really kind of uh, keep any parts out so you get an extra part of course the price has gone up a little bit but uh, the badassery level is also going up so I mean these these weapons here are just amazing you get a, a freaking arm here that you can hurl stuff at people you get this missile launcher you know the anti-aircraft gun they're just really cool looking and you know if you read the white dwarf it talks a lot about uh, specific character models and all sorts of different things like that. So it really, it's really got a lot of us thinking that, hey, maybe you know, Games Workshop's going to come out with some special characters, you know, and some different um, leaders of some of these night uh, factions and houses and things like that, you know, in the book, which would be really cool because it is a full size book, and a lot of us bit and bought that book less than a year ago, and it came with like two sets of rules in it. And so now I would like to see a little bit more personally. I don't mind buying the book because that's what I do. I buy books. I like uh, I like Warhams, but you know I, I feel a little jaded having bought it. You know, just a short time ago. But that being said, uh, it would be really cool to see a lot of different material in there. Um, you know, on some of the different knights that have already come out. Of course, you got uh, Dronaticus or whatever his name is, and the Obsidian Knight. So you got a couple of special knights. Uh, you got a, a, the formation, the Atlantis, of course. And then you've got the two knights that came in the book. So you've, we've already got about five things that can go in there right off the bat. So that's, that'll be really neat to see. So here's the really sweet Codex artwork cover. So, of course, you know, it's going to showcase more on lots of knights. And uh, then we've got a data cards release for that as well. So uh, that being said, they're also rolling out with some new paint brushes. Of course, you know, maybe just in time to paint those large armor plates that are on uh, the new knight model. So you've got a, a, a very range, I guess, of... of paint brushes from you know stuff to do terrain and stuff to do uh, larger armor panels like I really like these chisel brushes I've been using these for quite a few years for both washes and also to base coat large uh, surface areas themselves um, but you know it's kinda cool to see that they finally came out with some way bigger sizes here now personally you don't always need to buy this stuff I mean you can go to you know um, Home Depot or Lowe's and get those packs of brushes that are less than a dollar for like a bunch of these now granted they're not going to be like this fine quality and I probably wouldn't use them on my models but I'll sure as heck use them on my terrain because that's just super easy like I was saying too there's a whole bunch of sections in here about the heraldry of the different night houses and this kind of gives you an idea of like how they're kind of laid out and how a typical battle formation might be which kind of gives you some ideas that, hey, maybe we'll see some of this stuff. Maybe we'll see like a Decurion or whatever in the actual Nightbook. Now, of course, there's no confirmations on that. And that's just, you know, I'm, I'm really wondering why they put so much heraldry and so much background and so much fluff just in this White Dwarf in particular. You know, the, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to kind of see where they're going with it. But maybe, you know, maybe we'll see some really cool stuff out of it. Then it gets into a whole section where they show you all the different parts. And one of the things you can take that not a lot of people, we just, we just saw this on... Uh, we were looking through the uh, the the codex here or the white dwarf here is there's a melta option that you can take on these guys too, which is way better in my opinion than than the silly stubbers. But I definitely wouldn't mind a little melta gun action in the front there. Now here's that really sweet paint guy poster. It folds out. I mean this, this thing's really big. You can hang it in your hobby room. Gives you some really great ideas about color schemes and things. You know some different patterns. You know if you're like, hey, I want this to look like this. You know, and then they go from, you know, the actual layering to the actual dry brush. You know, this is a great chart, too. A lot of these paints, um, at least the layered ones, not so much the bases, are really easy to airbrush if you water them down a little bit. So this kind of gives you a good um, idea there as well if you're into airbrushing and you want some of the very unique colors. Because 
the, you know, the Citadel line is like, what, 200 different paints? I mean, there's not a lot of different lines out there that are that big currently. So um, then kind of going through the White Dwarf, you know, we got another great paint splatter article. It was just, you know, it wasn't too much. We kind of saw some of the stuff before with the last, um, the last night release, but it's still kind of cool to see it uh, in and of itself. And then there's a cool little battle mission here as well. Uh, just on the uh, Gods of War, like basically if you want to line up some knights and kind of uh, square off and face off and, and do some cool stuff like that. So then the rest of the issue is just kind of like showing off the knights. And this was the stuff I was talking about where they talk about specific like heraldry and specific um, characters and different things. So maybe we'll see them in the book, maybe we won't. But it's really interesting, you know, if you're, if you're into the knights and, you know, you kind of want some of that background. This, this issue might be for you, you know, it's, really, it's a really good read, I really enjoyed it. And then you get to the rules, only one in here, you got the Night Warden, now maybe that was, you know, on purpose, it's hard to say, but when you start reading it, you know, it's 375, and then you got to start equipping it. Now we saw some of the stuff earlier in the, earlier in the week with a lot of the rumors, and we're already seeing stuff for next week with the whole cult mechanicus and things, but it's still really neat to see it in print and actually have the data sheet on you, you know, so you can use it in your games. There are, there are two other variants of the knight in, in, going to be in the book, so we know that for sure just because we've seen the, the pictures of them here. So uh, as far as weapons go, we've got the Avenger Gatling Cannon, which if I recall correctly is also on the Strike, uh, strike Fighter for the uh, Forces of the Perium as well. So that's kind of cool to see. You know, it's, it's really cool that, hey, we took this really cool A-10 Warthog gun that's on a plane, right? What, what else can we do with it? I don't know, let's put it on a Titan and have it walk around the table, because how cool is that? <laughs> I mean, that's just the stuff that makes Warhammer cool, in my opinion, and it's really neat to see that, that stuff crossing over. And then you can, of course, take the missile pod, you got the normal rocket pod, and the twin Icarus auto cannon that can go up on the top, because, let's face it, the Knights actually had a problem dealing with flyers, or even, you know, targeting them in general, so it's really cool to see that they kind of have a chance uh, when it comes to that. Now, certain things is not going to affect, certain things it's going to really affect. It just kind of depends on what you're shooting at there. Then you got the Thunderstrike Gauntlet, which is really cool. You know, it kind of works a little bit like the Lifter Drop it did for the Orcs back in the day. You can kind of, if you destroy something, you can kind of pick it up and chuck it 12 inches. It's good they put a range on that because that could get a little abusive, in my opinion. Ion Shield's the standard that we saw in the past. So, um, you know, this was kind of what I was saying here too with the, the brushes, like with the chisel tip, you can really get in and get a lot of the, the plating and have a lot of control and also cover a lot of area at the same time. So kudos to GW for, uh, you know, kind of picking up on that and using those things because it definitely saves you a lot of time. And these things have a ton of trim. I mean, not like they're chaos, but they still have a lot of trim and it definitely takes a while uh, to paint these bad boys here. So then it gives you a to some previews and some things like that, of course. The teaser in the back, Lords of Mars, we already know, Cult Mechanicus is coming out. That cat is already out of the bag, so to speak. And then this ep epic picture on the back, you know, the bloodthirster of unfettered fury going up against the knight. Uh, who would win there? I don't really know. That's a, that's a tough one. He doesn't necessarily have a, a D weapon per se uh, on the actual attack, but uh, charging in there, you never you never really know. They're gonna He's going to get his stomping. He's going to get his uh, unwieldy D attacks as well at initiative one. So... Kind of some of the stuff we were talking about, uh, we, we took a little trip today, we're down at the, uh, the studios here to do some videos for the long war, so on the trip, uh, we had a chance to talk about some of the ways to deal that the knights can actually deal with wraith knights, and one of the ways we came up with, well, I, I said the strike down rule, but apparently that only works in combat, unfortunately, but, so if you are able to get in combat and hold your own with a knight against a wraith knight, which is initiative five, which tends to go first, and you are fortunate enough to survive, and you do get some strike down hits on him. He is going to swing an initial one next turn, which greatly increases your survivability uh, for the following rounds. But that being said, if you can get into terrain with a knight, uh, when a race knight charges you, he is not going to go at initiative five. He's going to go at whatever it is for charging through terrain for his particular situation at the time. So, you know, use terrain to your effect. If you're going to spend 375 points on a knight, you don't want him to get tore up by a race knight. So get them into the trees, you know, pretend you're Robin Hood and, uh, you know, go into the trees and try to take that charge because you're going to go first. You might do some damage, you know, on that D chart. It's definitely real these days. Everybody's got D all over the place. Uh, you know, knights are no different for um, a lot of the cases there. So um, some really interesting stuff. We still haven't seen it all. We, we still haven't seen all the upgrades. We still haven't seen a lot of the stuff that's still yet to come. So really exciting times. 
uh, Cole Mechanicus next week. Oh, and there was a little uh, tidbit in here too that we noticed. Something about the, the little uh, night gargoyles that are all over this, the little eagle's heads. These things right here. You could also replace those with um, Mechanicus cogs. So, that being said, they might have thrown that in there. Maybe just to, maybe just as a teaser for something that they might be on the actual Mechanicus Codex next week. Or, perhaps, you know, just because these are Mechanicus inherently, uh, you know, in origin. Either way, it's kind of cool to see on that new sprue that there's more than just weapons. There's also some pieces of trim and some different heraldry items and things there. So, uh, that's about it for this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching my uh, White Dwarf review for issue 66. The nights are coming here soon in the next week or so. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hop on over to the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and make sure you check out The Long War for exclusive video content and more. Become a veteran of The Long War today.